asynchronous javascript and xml okay a is asynchronous j is javascript and xml okay so xml part is all related to extended markup language okay that is that is also a markup language wherein uh, you would also see a tag and the values and at the same time you can also use another uh, object notation called as uh, json which is which is related to javascript and all the data can be represented in the format called json format okay now most of the time okay because we are dealing with javascript and related technologies most of the time it would be a j a j which means asynchronous javascript and json rather than xml so xml and json are both what they are uh, the data interchange format and filing system okay what it means is if you if you let me show you an example now this this particular uh, is a books.xml file what it contains there is a, a header that is xml version it will say and then there is a tag so every element every data that can be stored in a tag and the value kind of so tag which is catalog tag and catalog contains a books books contain author open and close title open and close genre price and all that okay so every book has got same information so what it contains it contains a tag and the value within that tag okay so these tags can be user defined you can go ahead and create any tags that you want so always in xml it is it is a tag and then the information okay that is the value whereas in if you observe the json file right let me pull some json file for you like for example this one json would look very similar to your uh, object uh, javascript object where you have a key value pairing right the only difference is even key is put down in a double quotes okay in in javascript object keys are not put into a double quotes okay only values are if it is a string okay so now this representation is nothing but a json file representation it has a key value pairing okay and this can also be written in in xml something like this where you can say uh, fruits okay. uh, you can have a fruits thing and then you have a closing fruits and then this tag can contain what and contain a fruit and uh, this can also have a fruit closing tag and within this you write apple okay and then it will contain next is uh, size and then uh, the close size will close okay closing tag for size and this value will be medium okay and then there is another tag that can be having the um, tag name as color and that will store the value as okay now this is xml representation okay main thing is you have fruits and then it contains a single fruit and fruits can have multiple values again one is about this uh, fruit and then you can go ahead and change a value to again you can have a number of things uh, within it multiple values again okay so now this is a json representation whereas this is an xml representation what are they representing they are representing the data okay so how the data can be stored and retrieved and manipulated using these file formats okay these are just the file formats json file and the xml file okay did you guys understand how this is represented yes sir okay now with that understanding right let's go ahead and see what ajax talks about when you say it's an xml file so ajax stands for asynchronous javascript and xml it's it's not a programming language okay it's not a programming language it is just a technique for accessing the web servers from the web page so you want to hit the web server wherever whether it might be a database or it might be a file where you, your file can be an xml file javascript uh, json file or a .txt file any kind of files accessing those files on the web server through a web browser okay allows web pages to upload asynchronously by exchanging data with the web behind the scene what it means is you can run multiple uh, tasks behind the scene in the background without having to interfere with your front end okay so all that can be happening behind the scene for you because you call a function that function calls another function and those will keep on executing uh, behind the scene asynchronously 
so that you won't feel that your system is waiting indefinitely for certain request or certain response to be made from the server okay and ajax apps might use xml to transport data but more commonly you would be using a json file or text plain text okay that is the reason uh, rather than ajax right it might be ajax as well where you say asynchronous javascript and json okay json is more widely used we'll come to that very soon now what ajax can do what are its features okay why do we why do we actually need ajax in the first place so why we need is whenever you want to update a web page without reloading the page okay what it means is like uh, uh, you have a web page if i click on certain uh, link then that page does not have to reload like this okay just by click of it you can go ahead and browse uh, uh, within the page itself you can operate certain things we'll see with an example very soon how that can work okay so and just remember that without reloading the page you can update the web page okay and request data from the server after the page has loaded so if the once the refresh has happened it has been page has been loaded even after that you can go ahead and request the data from the server and also receive the data from the server and send data to the server in the background as well all this can be made possible because of asynchronous javascript and uh, xml or asynchronous javascript and json okay same all right uh, we'll see some examples soon so now let's understand what happens here now, whenever you have a web page called zami.com and user clicks on a login uh, uh, link, okay, the moment there is a click, then an event has occurred, okay, an event will occur and that and a create XHR object and uh, send the HTTP request. We'll come to that. What is XHR? It is nothing but an XML HTTP request. Okay, we'll we'll talk about this very soon. This is an object, and we'll see what it is. Just for now, understand that whenever I click on the login button on the web page, it it is an event is triggered, and that event would create a XHR object and send a HTTP request to the internet. And over the internet, it would send to the uh, actual server, and this server processes the HTTP request and create the response and send back the data. Okay, this is a H uh, Zami server, and it will create a response and send back the data through the uh, internet uh, back to the browser. So the pr process returns the data using JavaScript. Okay, and update the web page contents. Like for example, when I click on the login page, then the login page has to load, and that is like login.html page has to be displayed on the uh, browser. This is all will happen behind the scene. Now. Uh, we'll understand what this XHR object is and wh what is this sending HTTP request is all about. Now, <clears throat> what is this XHR in the first place? XHR is a XML HTTP request. This is an object. Okay. This is a built-in object that can be used to exchange data with the server behind the scenes okay so ultimately this object is used to exchange data with the server behind the scenes so with this it's possible to update parts of the web page without reloading so this is what is uh, is the main uh, object that would that would make it possible to exchange the data with the server and update the parts of the web page without reloading the page now how do we how do we do that let's let's take one example here so uh, usually you declare a variable and say you use an operator called new with this XML HTTP request and this is an object and this would create an object variable which we are storing here. Now let's let's take this example. So what is happening here? There is a header, okay, which simply says and there is a paragraph which is blank, no contents is there. And now I am going to upload this content from somewhere. Let's see how that can be done. All right. Now what is this? Now what I'm creating, this is a object that I'm creating a new object and assigning this. And now let's see here what this contains. Uh, let's go here. Okay. Now let me put this. Now what this contains, it is nothing but this file, right? I have created a const variable called HTTP REQ and this is creating a new instance of this object. So what it has created, this 
is nothing but your H XML HTTP request. It has got a lot of properties. Okay, uh, so it has got like on about or on error, on load, what should happen, on progress, what should happen, and ready state response. What is response text? What is response type? Response XML. We'll understand that one by one. Okay, so now understand that I am creating a new instance of this object into this variable. And this variable, what I'm saying, whenever on load, on load is what? It's a built-in property, that DOM property. Whenever on load, uh, so if you if you see here, this is the this is the uh, 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 property that I'm trying to use it. Okay, on load. So whenever the web page is loaded, okay, whenever the web page is loaded, I am going to call this function. What this function is saying? Okay, it, it is loaded. Okay, so simple. Uh, on the web console, I'm trying to say it is loaded. Now, uh, uh, document get element by ID. This is the selector. I'm selecting what para. This is a para that I have given an ID name para one and inner HTML. That is what I'm changing. This is the property associated with uh, this particular element that I'm selecting. For this element, I'm changing the inner text. What is this inner text currently? There is nothing blank here. So I am updating that to this response. What is this response? If you observe, if you observe, there is also a property called response text. Okay. So response text is this one. So what it contains and what is its value being coming from? So it is coming from open and send. So what is this open and send? So send is a request to the server using what open and send method. So wh what is this we are trying to do? We are trying to send the request to the server using open and send methods. Open and send methods are what? If you if if, if you see um, uh, these different properties, right? There is also a method called open and send. So it is associated with XML HTTP request object. So we have defined this constant dot open and these are the methods so what are these open and send these are the request whenever we want to request uh, to be sent to the server we use open and send methods now open what it specifies it specifies the request what kind of a request it is it is a get request so now the method the request type is get or post get what you will get the data or response from the server Okay, and URL is nothing but your file location where on the server the file is located. Okay, and async is whether you want to run it asynchronously or you want to run it synchronously, which is asynchronous means behind the scene it will be executing parallelly with all the multi, multi threaded kind of features, whereas synchronously it will wait for uh, the uh, earlier uh, function or the operation to execute and only then this will execute. Okay, so now when I say true, which will means it will execute asynchronously. And send send what it does a send method send method request the uh, sends the request to the server. Okay, now what is this doing? Now if I if you observe text file dot txt that is located here, what it contains it contains three lines simple text file. It contains uh, skills am one two and three sentences. Okay, and these sentences are stored in text file.txt that is the url that i have given you okay path because i have kept it in the same folder location i am able to give it a simple uh, path of the uh, name of the file that should be enough so what i'm trying to uh, say is on load whenever the web page is loaded i am executing this function and this function is doing what it is getting the response text from the server how is it getting the response text from the server because of this request so what what is that i'm trying to say i am trying to open the file and get the information that is located on the server or inside this file and send it to me so that once you send it that response is captured in the response text and then i am uploading i am uh, showing that text in the paragraph one so let's see this. If I execute this, this is what you see. What is this? This entire three lines are coming from text file.txt. 
and where is this text file is being stored it is stored behind the scene in the server okay this is the server location that i am because i am executing in the same uh, server location for my pc now my server is this computer and my client is this computer okay both are same so that is the reason you are not seeing any um, any changes there but usually it, it can be accessed over the internet through a long um, through this get open and send response okay methods sorry so understand that uh, two three things here one is what is this xml http request it is basically a uh, an object that is used to send the data to the server okay um, not only send it is to exchange the data you can send the data you can receive the data both from the server okay and now uh, uh, another important thing is without loading the reloading the page you don't have to reload the page just send this request at the server you'll get the response capture that response like in response text or response xml or whatever it is format and then uh, show it on your web page using your dom manipulation uh, techniques like selecting the dom element and manipulating the uh, inner html okay so for that you need to accompany with two methods okay send request to the server using open and send methods open method specifies the request what kind of a request it is so it is a get method request or post method request whether you want to receive or you want to um, uh, again uh, you want to post back to the server or you want to get the information from the server and that server file location is specified in the second argument uh, in the open method and last argument is about how do you want to execute it whether you want to execute it asynchronously or synchronously okay did you understand this guys yes sir okay good so now uh now what you have seen here you have seen just observe that you have a response text what it means is your http request has been responded from the server in a text format okay that is the reason you are getting in a .txt file now there is also an option to have it re response xml as well okay you can get that in response xml so we will we'll understand how how to do that okay. let's let's take another example so now this this is a good example now what is this i am trying to do here let's let's take the skeleton of the before we jump into the scripting let's see what is being done uh, to the xml file so xml contain uh, i mean uh, html file html file contains a header which says demo ajax xml and then there is a button that is being created a button has got what a button has got a uh, type which is of the type button and uh, button caption says book collections all right and there is on load uh, uh, again there is a property called on load uh, i mean argument called on load on load whenever uh, on click sorry on click whenever this button is clicked you are calling a function what function load xml without any parameters uh, arguments understand that the, there is a header there is a button and button has a caption called book collection and there is a uh, uh, parameter uh, which uh, there is an argument uh, sorry there is a uh, um, attribute called on click and this on click whenever there is click on the button then you are calling this particular function and then there is a table being created with an id called tbl nothing into it because what we want to do now whenever we click this button we want to create a table that is what the uh, need is and how are we creating the table we are creating the table based on the data that is available in the xml file and let's understand the xml file that we are trying to use in this the xml file is same that is called books this is the file that we are using xml file books.xml and this xml file is stored onto the web server okay now we are getting that information from the web server and show it on your web page or which is nothing but your browser so this xml file contains what it is a catalog of all the books okay so now there uh, each book has been given this particular tag called book and there is an identifier associated with them 
and this book tag contains author title genre price published date and description a brief description of what that uh, uh, xml file is all about okay so with this understanding right let's let's go ahead and see how we can retrieve ultimately what i want to do i want to click this button called book collections the moment i click this button i want to get the author and title name of all the books okay i want to show it in a tabular format like how is that uh, uh, it, it will look let me show you here let me uncomment this and show you how that will look so this will be kind of an output that i am trying to visualize so this is your web page so uh, the, there is a uh, already the page has been loaded okay now the moment i click this button there is no reload happening okay because that is what i am doing asynchronously without reloading the page i am getting the information from the web server okay through different uh, using uh, xml http request and the xml file that i'm trying to use that is all the process we are doing is ajax asynchronous javascript and xml this is a true ajax okay now the moment i click just observe there is no reload the moment i click it is just showing me the table where is this information coming from it is coming from the xml file and what kind of a, uh, first there is a title and then there is an author name title name author title author title have been displayed here by clicking the button now let's see how this can be achieved now that you understood what the table contains and how this operates and everything it's a simple button and the table is currently a blank if you see uh, the table the table nowhere exists the first time it is loaded the table is not there the table is blank okay button exists which will call on load uh, load xml function let's see this is a user defined we created this let's go ahead and understand what this will do so what will happen the moment i click the button this function is called and this function is defined here what this function says it's it starts here and it ends here so what this function says first i am creating a uh, http a, a xhr xhr object i am creating an instant of that so uh, so we'll create that and a, a new constant called http request and then uh, http request dot on ready state change okay this is a this is an important property uh, we'll understand that now now <clears throat> what is uh, uh, this first we understood the send request to the server we we saw how open and send were used and open contains the method url and async and then there is a send which will send the request to the server that we saw now let's see the server responses that is on a ready state change what is this this defines a function to be called when a ready state property changes so what is this ready state property okay so a ready state property holds the status of this particular object what what are those those are the numbers like 0 1 2 3 4 so 0 means request not initiated 1 means server connection established 2 means request received then three means processing request and four means request finished and response is ready okay these these are the different states or the status of xhr okay the moment you request to the server through xhr object then it will have one of these four st states ready states okay so on ready state change is a property of this xhr function um, um, object what it does it defines a function to be called when the ready state property changes so uh, so on ready state function is called every time the ready state changes whenever there is a change in the status like first you have requested and connection is established then the uh, on ready state uh, property again that changes because it changes from zero to one and then it will be changing from two uh, to three three to four okay so that is uh, that will always keep on changing so whenever that request uh, changes re ready state that is the status of this xhr request changes then these values will be associated with the ready state now at the same time there is a status associated with the 
uh, XHR object. Then what are those status? Whether the HTTP request is 200, which means the request is okay. When it is 403, then it is forbidden. You don't have access to it. When 404, you might have end up with uh, a lot of time, uh, 404 page not found. Okay, those are all the HTTP request statuses. Okay. And then there is a status text, returns the status text, whether it is okay or not found. Okay, there are only two values, like whether it is okay or not found. So this, this, is, this is a better way, status, you can check status or you can check this uh, ready state. Like if a uh, request is received, okay, and uh, the status is, uh, let's say 200, means everything is fine. So then uh, the server has to respond. So this is what we are going to utilize in our uh, next. So what it is doing on re ready state change, I am calling a function. So what function is being called? If the ready state value is four, four means what? Four is request finished and response is ready, which means server is ready to respond now. Okay. And this status, then the status is equal to 200. The so status is 200 means everything is okay. Okay. Uh, so the, uh, the request has been received and the response is ready from the server and the status is 200. Then I'm calling this function. So what this function will do? This function will create a read from the XML and everything. We'll come to that very soon. But now let's understand the very first uh, the, the very first on change state the function is called and this function will do what this function uh, will will check the status ready state as well as the status if everything is looks good we are calling a certain function to uh, fetch the information from there from the server and what is this http request a request req is doing it is again open get request is there from the book.xml this is the url and you need to run it asynchronously and send that response request so once this request is sent when is this happening whenever i click on the button then the function is called and this function will do all this so when on ready on ready state change when there is a change in the state either from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 we, we are executing this function again and again so the moment the ready state is 4 and the status is 200, I'm calling this function called books function. So what this function will do when the server response is ready and the HTML table is going to be built. So the server is in a ready state to response and the status looks everything good. Then an HTML table that we want to build in a tabular format, right? That is how we are going to build that okay from the xml file that is being uh, passed here that is books.xml now let's understand that what this books function does books function is receiving what it is receiving nothing but it is receiving this particular xml file okay whatever the xml file that we are receiving from the server okay which is this file so this file is being xml file is being passed and what it is doing XML dot response XML. So whenever whatever the response XML we receive, we are assigning that to XML book. If you observe the other one, right? We had received response T text, right? The earlier we had received this response text because we are being passing the text file and we are receiving the response text. But in this case, we are passing the XML file. That's the reason we are uh, the response we will be expecting is the response XML. So the response data as an XML format is being assigned here. That is XML book. Then I'm creating a tag here, the XML tags, which are being created, which says make XML. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to add a header. So this is a table row, table header, then author, table header close, table uh, header open, and again, I'm creating a title. So author and title have been added as a headers. In the table now the first row of the table is being created then what i'm trying to do then xml this xml file that we have received if you observe this let's 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 put to the console and see yeah 
So uh, what it contains? It contains the response. What is this response? This is the entire XML file. But if you observe the response XML, this is a document of the XML file that we are receiving. So the response XML is a document, whereas the response is the content of that document. So for now, what we are receiving, the response XML, which is a XML document, which is at this URL. Okay. So this URL is being assigned to XML book. So this XML book, what we are trying to do, dot get element by tag name, which is book, which is nothing but, uh, if you observe, We are creating a, a, in this XML, right? Get element by tag name called book. So if you go here, there is a tag name called book here. This is what it meant. So in the XML, which is this file, in this file, I am getting this tag, book tag, and assigning that to book tag. So if you go ahead and observe what the book tag. Oh, sorry. You know, I need to go ahead and print. So I need this. It's just for your reference. I'm showing this, uh, just to see what it contains at that point in time, so that you will. Yeah. So now, if you see this book tag, it contains all these book items. So, what what is that? It contains this one one two three so how many of them are there so all of these there is one two three four so almost almost we have 12 of them i guess okay so yeah from 0 to 11 which is 12 that is what we are getting in this all right and then i am trying to iterate that and create a table row and table data okay so uh, I am taking this book tag which contains my uh, get element by tag name and this will be my HTML collections all the book tags will be collected what are those book tags all these all these 12 book tags would be collected in this HTML collection which is book tag and this book tag I am iterating inside that I am I am getting what I will be getting a author tag as well as the title tag only two information I am fetching them and I am adding those to uh, the table data. Okay, for all those, I am adding the table data. Inside the table data, I am trying to add all of them. Okay, make sense? If you observe, so the author and title, only those two. So uh, how many times I am trying to iterate until the uh, length of that array? So if you observe, is this? If you observe this collection, this is the array from zero to eleven index. So the length of this array is what? It will be twelve. This would so this will be equal to twelve. So all the twelve book tags which contains the author and title both we are trying to get them and add them here within the table row and table data so we are capturing all that so this has to be like table oh sorry 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 yeah, this is correct because because table row has started i'm entering the table data which will be only author and then again table data is being started and that table data will contain only the title so one this is all one row all right because we need to get the table author and uh, the author and the title okay so outer is a table row table row ends here then there is a table data which will be one data which is related to author that is added here and then there is another data 
which is about title and <clears throat> that is added here and then your row will complete okay table row will complete and then it will iterate one more it will go to the i is equal to one and then this will be true and then it will create another tag another uh, tr and td which will create this row okay and then uh, so on so forth it will continue until it is less than 12 which means i is equal to 11 till that it will go and finally it will print this and come and exit the for loop and then inner.html the make table which is all the table rows will be added here to your inner html called tbl which is defined as an id here so get element by id which is tbl where whose inner html will be updated by the entire table couple of things here to just uh, recapitulate okay <clears throat> one is xml h ttp request this is an object that is created okay this ab object uh, what it do what it does it will help you to exchange the data between the server and the web page that is what the function of it and it it will do it what without reloading the web page that is what its function is and now this object has got multiple properties associated with it one so all those multiple properties one of it is on ready state change so this particular uh, uh property has got what it has got a certain uh defines a function to be called when ready state property changes so ready state is again holds the status of this uh h uh, xhr which is xml http request either it can be 0 1 2 3 4 uh, depending on what state of that request is and then there is a http request response status where it will say uh, 200 which is okay 404 which is page not found and all that all right and then um, uh, then there is an xml file xml ajax can be interactive with xml obviously and this is how the xml file would look like we have taken only one uh, uh, node of uh, this one book id we call this each node okay and this is one node this is one node again this is also another node so we, we, in xml right we call these as nodes 